I've been asked for a while now to take a look at tiling on KD Plasma, and I've been a little resistant to doing so simply because the scripts that existed before really weren't all that good. I tried Cronkite, and while it worked, you could tell that it was kind of forcing itself on KWIN, and it was just kind of buggy. Now, I know that it was better than the scripts that had come before it, and it really wasn't that bad, but it still was something that I just wasn't all that positive about. Now, one of the things that I always have a problem with when it comes to this sort of thing is that I'm a tiling window manager guy. I use actual tiling window managers like i3 and DWM and things that are actually meant to be tiling window managers. And I find myself to be a little bit of a snob when it comes to things that imitate them. So when I tried Pop Shell a few months ago, I wasn't all that impressed because it's not all that customizable. Like it you have a bunch of hard-coded key bindings in that scenario and you can't change them. They're just there and you have to kind of deal with it. So I'm always a little bit resistant towards making something that is not a tiling window manager a tiling window manager and then imposing rules on it that are kind of meant for things that aren't tiling window managers. So I've been a little bit resistant towards actually doing a video on a tiling window manager inside of Plasma. It's just two things that don't really go together for me. But then I was told about a script called Bismuth. And Bismuth is a script, I think it's a, a KWIN script, that will allow you to make KD Plasma into a Tiling Window Manager. And it does so in a way that is not offensive to me all that much. And it's actually pretty good. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now the first thing you should know is that as far as I'm aware, you can't actually install this from the KWIN add scripts manager thing. So if you go to window management and go to KWIN scripts and hit this new this get new scripts thing and you search for bismuth you're not going to find it as far as I'm aware. Yeah it's not there. So you, you have to install this in some other way. It's in a lot of repos. I installed it from the AUR. You can also build it from source if you want to build it from source. I would much prefer that it was part of this get new scripts thing because it'd be easier for most people to install but the developers have chosen not to do that. Now, it's also possible that it's not actually a KWIN script. And it just wouldn't fit in there. So I, I don't actually know. I just know that this is how you install it. You do, you'd open up a terminal, do paru, and then bismuth. And it will search for it. And you'll see that it's actually in the Arco Linux repositories and in the AUR. I installed the Arco Linux one. They turns out they're exactly the same. But the point is, is that's how you would go about installing it. It's usually from a repo. Now, once you've installed it, close out of settings because it won't appear until you close it out and open it back up if you have it open. Uh, you'll find a new section here called window tiling and you'll have to enable tiling with this button here and then hit apply and all your windows then will be tiled. So if you open up a new window, you'd get more windows like this. Now, one thing that I've changed is that by default, when you have two or more windows, you'll actually get a title bar. I didn't want that, so if you go to Appearance here, you can actually turn that off, which I find really cool. That's something that, as far as I know, Cronkite wasn't able to offer. Now, it's possible that it was added in later on in Cronkite, and I just don't know about it, but when I used it, that possibility wasn't there. You had to do the traditional way of removing the borders outside of the tiling aspect of it. Now, we'll come back to the gaps here in just a minute, but the rest of the settings here are actually fairly intuitive. You can obviously enable or, in or disable window tiling. You can change layout. So there's it comes with several different layouts. The tile layout, the monocle layout, three column, which would be three windows side by side, and then they tile like that. You had the spiral layout, layout, which we call the Fibonacci layout, the spread layout, which I'm not actually sure what that is, and the stereo layout, which I also don't know what that is. You can also choose to have separate layouts for each activity or virtual desktop, and then you can control how your windows react to the tiling aspect of Bismuth. So you can have it, so it maximizes the sole, sole window, which means that you have no gaps along the outside, and it's full screen. You can choose so that the floating window is always on top, which is good for dialogues and stuff like that. You can also choose where new windows spawn. So this is something that you'd have to patch into like DWM if you wanted to spawn into a different place. You can either have it set for it so it comes at the end of the stack or at the beginning of the stack. And then there are a whole bunch of rules. So you can restrict the window width. You can prevent the window from minimizing. You can prevent the window from protruding in from its screen. 
and you can also disable tiling for certain applications whether it be on activities, which nobody uses activities, or on certain screens. Now, interestingly, it says screens here and not workspaces. You notice that. So I don't know whether or not this applies to actual like monitors, like screens like monitors, or if it means workspaces. I'm not sure how that actually works. The point is, is that those rules are available. Now, you can also change rules for specific windows to ignore, for tiling to ignore windows. In other words, it would, they would it would basically float just like normal. Or you can force things to float with these rules here. The other thing that it does is allows you to set gaps. So if you open up another window here, you'll s you actually won't see that here. So if we go to another, if we close settings here and open up two terminals, you'll see that there are actual gaps. Now, the reason why it didn't work with settings is because settings requires itself to be a certain size and it won't go any smaller. Uh, now, there is a workaround for that that you can find that on the Bismuth GitHub. It will help you to make it so that that's not as big of a deal, but I haven't done that yet. So the point is, is that when you do have windows that can open up to whatever size, you can have gaps and I've set my gaps to five and it looks really nice, I have to say. Now, the one thing that you will have noticed in this tiling settings panel here is that there's no place for key bindings. And that's because key bindings are being left to Plasma itself to manage. So if you actually search for shortcuts, you'll get this panel here and you can then type in Kwin and you'll get a whole bunch of options for managing your windows. So this means moving your windows with your keyboard like you would do in a tiling window manager. This is miles and away better than Pop Shell because Pop Shell doesn't give you any customization at all in terms of keyboard shortcuts for everything. Like now there has some things that you can customize, but not all of them. Like some of them are hard -coded, coded. In this you can change everything. Like you can change how to move the windows from one side to the other, one screen to the other, one workspace to another. Uh, you can change keyboard shortcuts to have them go from floating to not floating. The sky is the limit in terms of what you want to customize your keyboard shortcuts for. Now, obviously this can be severely overwhelming if you're not used to managing your shortcuts, but frankly, it's not that big of a deal. For anybody who's used a tiling window manager before, this is a piece of cake. For me personally, I haven't gone through and changed hardly any of them except for the ones to change workspaces and move clients from one screen to another. That's basically the ones that I've added. Now the one thing that you'll see is if we open up a browser here and go to their GitHub page, you'll actually see a section down here at the bottom called the tweak section and that gives you some tips on making it so that Bismuth and Kwin play better with multiple monitors. So you can enable a couple of extra keyboard shortcuts. You can also enable the multi-screen behavior. And one of the things that I went and did was enable the focus follows mouse option, which means that every time I the mouse goes over a screen, it activates. That way it works similar to what you'd see in a tiling window manager, whereas if you do end up using your mouse, you can activate a, a client by hovering over it instead of having to click on it, which is the normal K KDE default. Because a lot of times I was finding myself going to another screen, starting to type because the mouse was over there and realized that that window wasn't actually in focus because I'm so used to when the mouse is hovering over something, usually that means that window's in focus. That's not actually the case in default plasma. It's something you have to change. So that's definitely something that I highly recommend you do. Uh, if you're going to stick with the tiling and you are used to it. If you're used to using Plasma as it is, maybe the clicking doesn't bother you. For someone coming from a tiling window manager, I would go this way. Now, when you do have multiple windows open, I have found that it's been very responsive. One of the things that I had a problem with with, K with Cronkite is that when you spawned a new window, sometimes it would have the window pop up like a floating window and then snap into the position into the, the, the stack. And I had the same problem with the pop shell on pop OS is that you could really tell that it wasn't meant to be a tiling window manager and it some kind of sometimes bugged out. I've not had that problem with Bismuth at all. It's been very responsive and you can open up as many windows as you want and you can tell that it just works. Like sometimes when you with even dedicated tiling window managers, you open up multiple windows, it can get sluggish. I haven't had any problems with that whatsoever on Bismuth in KD Plasma, which is nice.
There are also several different dedicated window tiling shortcuts that you can change. So you can change to different layouts using these settings right here. Now some of them aren't assigned to anything, but you can, for example, do Meta M and it would change to the monocle layout, which means every single new window you open will be full screen. You can change to the previous layouts and stuff like that using the meta and the pipe symbol and the backslash. So that's going to be meta backslash will change to the three column layout, which looks like this. And you just remember that the settings does not like to be scrunched down that much. So we'll close that. So that's the three columns layout. And then if you do super shift and then backslash, or in this case pipe, it changes to the monocle layout and then do it again. This is the tile layout and then the spiral layout, which looks like this. So that's basically the Fibonacci layout. We'll close that and then we'll go back again. And this is the stair layout. This is what that looks like. Uh, you can see it's kind of uh, that's a really weird layout. It like it's kind of like monocle, but the windows keep getting smaller that I don't. I don't know why that would be useful at all, but apparently someone likes that layout. We'll close a whole bunch of those. That's a weird layout. We'll do this again. This is the spread layout, which is kind of the same. You can see the windows are kind of progressively moving to the left. We'll try to make this easier to see. Yeah, that's a little weird, right? I don't. Again, I'm not sure why that this layout would be useful because you can't actually how would you go about using any of these other windows like the, that seems like a waste of screen real estate but whatever floats you boat if you wanted to use that you could use it really easily now we'll go we'll do another one this is the three, three column and then we saw there all the rest of them so those are the layouts and you can change those keyboard shortcuts just like you can change any other cheap keyboard shortcuts so if you wanted to change this one you just hit add custom shortcut put in the shortcut that you want to use hit apply and that would change the shortcut now that is bismuth for Plasma Kitty. I have to admit that this is actually very impressive. Now I don't think that it's going to get me away from tiling window managers. There's still a mile above in terms of customization in a tiling window manager that you're not going to get here. So things like doing a different bar. I mean, you could technically do a different bar here if you wanted to, I suppose, now that I think about it. But the point is, is that there's a different feeling at least to configuring a tiling window manager in a config file than there, there is configuring it like this. And maybe that's just me. And I'm, like I said at the beginning, a snob when it comes to tiling window managers. But I don't think that this is going to get me away from a tiling window manager. But I will say that if you are a Plasma user and you want to kind of see what pla what tiling is all about, this is a great entryway. Like, give this a try. If you like this, then maybe a tiling window manager will be something that you'd be interested in trying out later on. Uh, and because it's kind of like a halfway point, because you get all of the benefits of Plasma here. You got all the, the customizations, you got the panels, you got the settings, all that stuff here already because it's just Plasma. But you get the some of the benefits, at least, of a Tiling Window Manager. So it kind of give you a taste of it to, to, make, to maybe give you an idea of whether or not it would be for you or not. So that's really cool. And I can also see... For people who don't want to leave Plasma at all and know they don't want to leave Plasma, maybe they're not interested in doing all their configuration in a configuration file, going this route will give them the benefits of a Tiling Window Manager without leaving the, the comforts of Plasma behind. So that's really cool. And I have to say that I'm also very impressed with how stable it is. Now, I've been having some problems with KWIN. Every time my screen goes asleep, it forgets which monitor is which monitor. So sometimes my panel's on this one. Sometimes my panel's on that one, and for wh whatever reason, the, the wallpaper just goes away. Like, when I <laughs> when I wake my monitors back up, the, the wallpapers are gone. Now, this has nothing to do with bismuth. I should just point that out. That's just something that I'm experiencing because of plasma. Don't know what's going on there. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go back to i3 anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have comments on this, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast on Twitter. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Nathan, Jules, Steve, A, Cyber, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Arsener, J-Dog, Carbonated, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Andy, Ross, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Ben, and Six, Primus, PM. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.